how to create content for your LinkedIn about section. That's going to be today's topic. But before we get into that, just a couple little notes. Just remember that you can email me your question weekly, brian at brianhorvath.com. Brian at brianhorvath.com. You can let me know your questions about LinkedIn. And as they come in, I love to get them on the show or have you see them on recording or even answer them via email. And of course, every week when these um, lives are done, I go ahead and finish them up and edit them just a just a hint, uh, just a bit and put it onto YouTube so you can watch it. There's a whole library there called How to Make the Right Connections on LinkedIn. And you can watch all these YouTube um, live or excuse me, these LinkedIn live videos, these LinkedIn live Q and A's that I do each and every week. And I've been doing them for multiple months now. You can find a whole library there to help you use LinkedIn in your journey. And of course, I um, also offer coaching and consulting services, helping folks as well. So if you're interested in that, you can also email me at brian at brianhorvath.com. But today we're going to talk about, well, actually one more reminder, go ahead and put in your calendar for next week. And I'm going to try to get better. Um, I am going to get better at putting these little notices out there in social media so you can be reminded about them. You can add them to your calendar in advance. But every Wednesday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, we'll be having these LinkedIn weekly uh, weekly LinkedIn live Q&As where I'll share some um, some notes, I'll share some comments, I'll share some, uh, some, some training, but also receive from you back um, any questions and answer those questions for you because guaranteed somebody else has them. You know, it's like kind of being in class, you know, you don't want to be the person to raise your hand because you don't want to feel embarrassed because you don't know something maybe, but guaranteed that person to the left or to the right is going like, thank you. Thank you for asking that question. Um, I had it too. I just didn't want to be the one to lead and raise my hand. I always which hand <laughs> anyway so reminder put this in your calendar weekly wednesday's live is going to be at noon and love to have you join me 9 a.m pacific standard so let's jump into today today's topic is drum roll please right how to create content how to create content for your linkedin about section how to create content for your LinkedIn about section. So hopefully you're going to enjoy, I know you will, I know you will, because it's going to answer some questions for you. It's going to help you solve some problems that I get, uh, some questions I get a lot when they uh, folks get to LinkedIn and they see this big blank screen that says, fill me with content, feed me, feed me, yet I don't know what to write. Ah, and people get stopped and they get stuck and they don't know how to move forward or they're not completely happy with what their LinkedIn profile is showing the marketplace or showing prospective employers or prospective clients or prospective um, leaders of ministries or nonprofits or, you know, that could help them get that volunteer opportunity they've been wanting to do uh, or wanting to be a part of. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. But a quick review, as I always do on these uh, LinkedIn live Q&As from last week. And last week we had a fun topic. We talked to one that's pretty practical and that's how to get more LinkedIn profile views guaranteed how to get more linkedin profile views guaranteed i mean if you're going to spend all this time and do all this work on building up your profile in such a way that's going to you know hopefully rock the world right rock be a rock star on linkedin and you're not getting you're not getting any clicks it can be really defeating it could be really discouraging but i want to help you flip the script on that help you to um, pivot and make sure that you have the maximum opportunity for people to um, see who you are, see what you do, see how you um, add value to the marketplace. And ultimately that means um, getting more views, right? Because if, if people are interested in what you say and what you look like and what you're doing and they click on your profile to find out more about you, that's essentially a profile view. And I want to help you get more of those. Um, getting more profile views is going to help people um, take advantage of your call to action or to follow your lead when you ask them to take next steps with you. No matter if you're a content creator, if you own your own business, no matter if you're looking for a new role or you're looking to partner up with somebody or be a guest on a podcast or, or whatever the case may be, whatever call to action you want people to take as a result of viewing your LinkedIn profile won't happen unless people are actually viewing your profile. So I want to help you get more of those. And that's what we talked about last week. You can watch that video on my YouTube channel. Um, and you know, you can subscribe too, so you can always get updates um, on when these videos are posted live. But what we talked about was an interesting statistic, a statistic you don't want to mix called, four, it's 14x. This statistic is like the stat of the stat of the stat of the year. 14 times is the um, opportunity you have to get more clicks on your profile, to get more views on your profile by 14 times when you have a professional headshot. When you have a professional headshot that follows these nine things that I shared with you last week, 
these nine things here are smile and squinch. Okay, stay updated, keeping your you're keeping up to times with your headshot, right? Focus on your face, not having something that's like kind of like this or something that's like this, but that's really centered and focused right here on your kisser, right? Right on your face. And um, number four is make good eye contact in your pictures, right? Number five is dress for work. Be professionally prepared, be professionally dressed and uh, ready to go. And uh, looking like you'll be, you'd be on the team of that person that would want to click on your profile, right? Someone that fits into the culture that uh, that, that company or that prospective client uh, would be wanting to partner with, right? So dressing for work, you wanna make sure you're looking the part, right? You're looking the part. Number six, I really encourage you to hire a professional. Hire a professional photographer to do all the, um, all the lighting for you, all the prep work, all the post-production work, and then get those files finished for you, those, um, you know, whatever format, JPEG, PNG, um, whatever file format you had requested and get those sent to you in a professional way. I think that really would be helpful is hire a professional. Number seven would be to skip recycling. Don't be using pictures from other places to take um, the spot or where your professional LinkedIn profile headshot should go. But, um, you know, have that, uh, have the one that is in, you know, kind of right in all these things we're talking about here. That's in your wheelhouse. It says who you are and how you are and how you add value and says a lot about you following all these steps. Number eight would be consistent. And so that kind of goes into number six and number seven. Number eight would be be consistent with having um, your profile headshot for your LinkedIn profile also be that across social media all throughout, whether it be Twitter, whether it be uh, um, YouTube, whether it be Facebook, whether it be Instagram, whatever, and so on and so forth. Keeping that consistent brand, that personal brand that you carry with you no matter what employer you go to, no matter what company you work for, no matter what uh, business you're in, it is you that's going to be a part of that. You are the common denominator there, right? And number nine would be to seek feedback. So get, um, I had a friend, my friend Kathy, who actually came to me for LinkedIn co coaching, and she's in Charlotte. Hi, Kathy, if you're watching. And she came to me and uh, others and asked for, what do you think is my best headshot, you know, out of this array of um, shots that was taken by my professional photographer, which do you guys like best? And they were all great. All of them would have worked. But specifically, she sought feedback um, and went with what she, well, what she felt best with after her feedback. It doesn't mean that if her feedback said uh, picture A was number one and she decided to go with picture B, so be it, right? But she got feedback and it further affirmed her and confirmed for her how she should move forward. So those are the nine LinkedIn headshots must for you to get more profile views. The nine LinkedIn headshot must do is for you to get more profile views. So I hope you take that, use that, and uh, some of it you probably have ready to go. Some of it may need a little bit more tweaking. But all in all, these are the nine that will help you get that 14 times more clicks to your LinkedIn profile so you can get more views and have people take advantage of your call to actions and take next steps with you, whether it's in the hiring process or whether it's to hire you as a consultant or a coach or whatever the case may be to take that next step with you so you guys can partner for um, what, uh, you know, what, what work that needs to be done. Okay, so good stuff there. So that was last week. This week, we're going to talk about how to create content for your LinkedIn About section. How to create content for your LinkedIn About section. And this is um, trouble for a lot of people. And so that's why I say have no fear. Have no fear here because Brian is here. No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is have no fear because you have what it takes to get your About section populated, to get it um consistent to get it in a place that's going to add value and I'm going to help you do that today. I bet you have all the tools you need already. You just don't maybe have them all in order or maybe you just see a little bit of tweak here and there but nonetheless have no fear because even though this is a worrisome place for a lot of people, for a lot of people it's not about signing up for LinkedIn. It's free. It's a couple of clicks, a couple of data points and you're in and ready to go, right? But what happens is they open up their profile and they see blank, and it's like a blank cursor for an author or, or a um, an author who can't seem to press the keys on the keyboard or the typewriter, and they just got this, um, you know, just blank stare, and they're looking off into space, right? And they got writer's block. I don't want you to have that. I'm going to give you some tools today that are going to really help you in a major way get active, get oriented, and take advantage of all the power that's in LinkedIn. 
740 million people on the platform. If you've watched these videos week in, week out, you hear me say that almost ad nauseum, but 740 million people across the whole entire universe <laughs> are on LinkedIn and they're looking to connect with you and you're looking to connect with them, the right connections. I want to help you do that. And one of the ways, one of the best ways you can do that is to be crystal clear about how you add value to the marketplace, to be crystal clear about what I'm going to share with you here. And so have no fear. You can do this. You can create a LinkedIn profile. You can populate your LinkedIn profile without trouble. I'm going to help you. You can edit it if it needs edited. You can just start over if you need to just start over. Use what I'm going to share with you today to be able to take steps in the right direction to help you feel confident, help you feel excited, to have no worry, to have no fear, but to be fired up about what is going to be on the page. And it's also going to help you in your in-person networking, not just online, but also in person when you have this stuff buttoned up. So here we go. So the question I have for you, why do businesses exist? And if you're watching here, put a comment in, or if you're checking out the video uh, recorded on YouTube or wherever, put a comment in. Why do you think businesses exist? Well, one of the reasons is they exist to what? To solve problems. They exist to solve problems in the marketplace, exist to solve problems in the marketplace. That's why businesses exist, right? There's, um, let's just call it a uh, you know, restaurant. There's a restaurant because when you're on the road and you're hungry, there's a place where you can go for food. You don't have to be in your own kitchen, right? That's solving a problem. There's a Home Depot or a Lowe's or a hardware store that has lumber or materials that you need to do the home improvement projects at your house where you don't have to be the master of the inventory. You don't have to be the supply chain, right? You're the end user of that supply chain, right? So those businesses exist to solve problems. Why does my business exist? To help people know, live, and love their purpose for their career and finances, to not be tied up in knots about chasing the dollar or chasing a corner office or chasing what they consider a success or a notoriety when it's all tied up in their business and they're unhappy. Why? Because maybe it's not what they're supposed to be doing or maybe they got their purpose mixed up with what the work they do. And so all those kinds of things, companies exist to help solve problems, right? Why do doctors exist? Doctors exist to help us with our physical or our mental or our phys health problems, right? Solve problems in the marketplace. That is why they exist. What can you do to help? If companies are looking to solve problems that exist in the marketplace, as one individual, as one person, as one member on the team, you can come alongside those companies and help them solve the problems that their clients are experiencing in the marketplace. I think that's better said. You come alongside as a, as a, as a piece, as a team member, as a piece in the, in the puzzle to help them put out the fires that their clients are experiencing, to help them solve problems that their clients are experiencing, the pain points. That's what you do. That's what we all do. And I want you to change how you maybe have done about it in the past or maybe to be reminded that you should be seeking to serve to solve problems that are being experienced in the marketplace. Seek to serve to solve the problems. That's different. That is a game changer for your career, folks. That is life changing for your just your personality, for your attitude, for your charisma, for how you go about your life and your life purpose is seeking to serve. And I want to ask you, I want you to ask yourself two questions. How do I seek to serve? You may be saying, well, ask yourself two questions. What do you do best? Take a moment. Think about that. What do you do best? Who needs it the most? Who needs it the most? Let's go back. What do you do best? What skills do you have? What abilities do you have? What projects are you really good at? What gave you the most kind of a healthy pride, right? That you felt good about yourself when you completed that. What are things that you like to do that you enjoy doing? What are things about your current job or past jobs that you really got attaboys at? Like when, when the boss told you or your team members or your clients told you, man, that was really appreciated. That was a really a job well done. Kudos to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Or maybe there was something, you know, just in your personality and in, in that you know that you're good at. Those are things that you do best. You want to list those out. You want to hold on to those. You want to lean into those things. Okay. So a couple of things to help you do that are assessments like Strength Finders or Myers Briggs or maybe Enneagram. Uh, those are different uh, personality profiles or assessments, different skills assessments that will help you really hone in on what you do best. 
maybe looking at evaluations of, of, of employee employers in the past of what they said about what you do best. Maybe there's clients that have said, man, I really appreciate you because of this or that or the other. Those are the kind of things that can help, you know, kind of get your mind going about what you do best. Maybe it's something your spouse or your children or your family have said about you. Okay, what do you do best? Number two is who needs it the most? So taking all that goodness, all that great stuff, all those skills, abilities, dreams, goals, passions, that stuff you do well, and putting it to work and thinking about who could benefit from what I do best. And the answer is by who needs it the most. Who can benefit from what I do best? Is The answer is who needs it the most. Is it a, um, a company? Is it a client? Is it a certain industry, a certain vertical market? Is it education? Is it government? Is it um, you know high school, middle school? Is it uh, overseas? Is it online? Is it in person? Is it uh, mechanical? Is it uh, technological? You know, is it uh, more more brain work? You know, or it's all brain work, I guess, right? But is it more um, scientific? You know, is it more, are you a writer? Are you a speaker? Are you a coach? Are you an encourager? You know, there's all of these kinds of things, right? So that they, they, t- they tie in together what you do best, but who needs it the most? Who could benefit from it? How can you add value to the marketplace? How can you shine? How, do you, how can you seek to serve? What do you do best and who needs it the most? So here's an eye-catching LinkedIn formula that anytime you go looking at your about section or you, you go looking at your resume or you go looking at a cover letter or you go even in an interaction in an elevator pitch kind of setting or a, a networking event, you want to think about this real quick. Think about this framework. What do I do best is the B plus who needs it the most, which is the M, multiplied by the attitude of seeking to serve because when your attitude's right, what you do best plus who needs it the most really is multiplied, right? When you when you add service to it, when you add that mindset to it, because without a seeking to serve attitude, what you do best and who needs it the most, who cares? Who cares? Nobody wants to be on your team or nobody wants to have you on their team because you just don't have the right mindset. You don't have the right heart, the right attitude, the right perspective. So this eye-catching LinkedIn formula is something that you can remember that you can use when you're writing content. I did a poll recently on LinkedIn and asked, what is the biggest thing that you're concerned about when it comes to creating your profile? And um, people say it's writing confidently. This will help you write confidently. What do you do best? Who needs it the most? Multiplied, the fact is that you're seeking to serve. Okay, That's what I want you to remember. What do I do best plus who needs it the most multiplied by your seeking to serve attitude. And let's take a look at how you can use this, this in your profile, because that's what this is all about. How do you write your about section? So let's go ahead and hop over to LinkedIn here and let's share with you how you can do that. So here I am over in my Chrome, go to my LinkedIn profile here. And I'm gonna share with you how we can get you all set up. So you can see where I'm logged in. You can see where I'm logged in. I'm gonna go over to my name here and click on it. A couple of different ways you can get to your profile. Then I'm gonna come down to my about section. And I'm gonna click on this little pencil. You can see it right now it's truncated, this about section and it opens up a little window box. What I really want you to do is jump over here and I'm actually going to delete mine for a second. I'm gonna copy it over to my notes and make sure I don't lose it. So I'm gonna just, um, there we go. Okay, because I wanna work fresh with you here. All right, so it says here you can write about in your about section about your experiences, your industry, or skills. People also talk about their achievements or their personal job experiences, right? Here, what I want you to do is I want to think about, and you can just you know use this as your worksheet or as your notepad, although I would say this little caveat or a little something to consider. Anytime you're going to go write online when you're on an internet connection, there's a great possibility of you losing it. Ever lost a paper? at school or, or I remember a term paper, you know, if you didn't hit save back in the day, you had to always hit save on your own. Um, you'd have that big notepad in front of your or post-it note in front of your monitor saying save often, save early, save often, right? 
Well, in this case is I would consider that kind of the same kind of mindset. I would actually encourage you to start on a notepad, uh, meaning something that you won't lose before you drop it into LinkedIn. But in case you don't want to do that or you're just ready just to go now, go ahead and type in that um, equation up top. You know, best B plus M times S. And that will help you just remember what do you do best, okay? And one of the ways you do best is um, typing in I seek to serve what problem in the marketplace. So this is kind of your equation, right? I seek to serve what problem in the marketplace. Now you want to talk about how do I do it? How do I do it? Or with what do I do it? I seek to serve this problem in the marketplace with my X years of experience doing this, that, and the other. Basically, what you're doing here is you're sharing with the folks that are reading your profile what the solution is. Okay. So let's just call it what solution. And I like to carry uh, three things. I like to kind of keep it with threes. All right. So I seek to serve what problem in the marketplace with my X years of experience doing what? Now, let's say you don't have some experience. That's okay. Just skip that part. Just skip that part. But then down here, you can put in some backup information about that. Some backup information about that. Like, let me show, now let me populate mine. Here's what I do. Okay. I help people to know, live, and love the purpose for their career in finances. Now, what does that mean? Through speaking events, consulting with for-profit and non-profit businesses, as well as individual coaching and online courses, I help people realize that their career in finances do not determine a successful life, but are tools to help them achieve their overall life purpose. Okay, So that gives a little bit of a nugget for people to potentially want to read further down the profile. Now, I have some other things in here that I share in other videos I won't get into today. But some of the ways to back up or to third party endorse or uh, affirm or confirm what you are telling people above is you give folks some backup through like StrengthsFinder. I was telling you about the assessment. You can get a StrengthsFinder assessment for less than I think $40, definitely less than $50, and be able to get not only a book, but a great assessment that gives you a third party printout or readout or a report of what your strengths are. You can see mine up here. Here's my top 10. How about personality? You know, personality is really important how you're going to work with and gel with the team or how you get your job done and the matter you get your job done. And certain personalities are more equipped to do certain work than others, perhaps, right? Certain industries, that's definitely the case. So here is my DISC personality assessment uh, report results. Um, being a, a Christ follower, I have my spiritual gifts. So what are my spiritual gifts? My spiritual gifts are encouragement, leadership, and administration. And here's some words that describe me. These are words that I've used for myself or that others have used for me. You can put those words in there. What am I known for? Maybe some specific things that I'm known for. If people are gonna have to describe me per se, uh, what would they say that I do? Here's some of those words. And again, these are keywords that are also great for search, but also help you communicate in an easy to read and easy to understand way for people to see what you do best. And so those who need it the most will actually take action on you because of what you do best, that they need that. You're seeking to solve problems. These problems can be solved by things that you're good at, and you're listing those things here. Areas of influence. This is for me just, you know, in areas and scope of work that I've done or with kinds of people that I've done that work with. And then professional experience. Certain things I've done professionally that might be listed on a resume, those are all listed here. And then there's a couple other things with technology. I highlighted technology since we live in such a technological world and so on and so forth. And then here's some different connection opportunities as well as call to action. So that's what I would want you to do. You don't have to stare at this thing blank and go, oh no, what do I write? No, now you have a template. Now you have a framework. And if you want, just go take mine. Um, of course, make your words. Uh, don't don't use my words, but use your words. But use my framework. Use my template. It, go for it. That's what it's there for. And um, you know, we all learn from everybody else. There's nothing new under the sun. 
But one of the things I really want you to remember, and it's a pull point today, is to remember what you do best, add it to who needs it the most, and you get a good solution there, even multiplied by a, with a seeking to serve attitude. So you are seeking to serve what problem exists in the marketplace. With my X years of experience, and it doesn't always have to be paid experience, folks. So for folks coming out of college or folks that are trying a new career, there are transitional skills and transitional years of experience you have that still add value to that next role. Don't discount yourself. Be encouraged. Do not discount yourself. Okay. And then we have, um, these are some of my keywords that I use in my headline, by the way. Um, and then you can put in your, your little simple statement. And then you put in a little paragraph. And then you have keywords all listed down here throughout. Okay, so that's really a great place to start and not be overwhelmed in your about section. I see way too many people that don't even have an about section at all because they're afraid of the step. Don't be that person. Don't be that person. Okay, I'm here to help you. So let's get back to wrapping up. And I'm so glad that you're here with me today. I'm so excited that you got a chance to hear this. What you do best, it's plenty. Who needs it the most is plenty. When you multiply by seeking to serve, that will really change your world, really change your world. Today, we went over the eye-catching LinkedIn formula. What do you do best? Who needs it the most? Multiply by seeking to serve attitude. And so that is today's way for you to be able to get your about section taken care of, or maybe it needs a rewrite, or maybe it needs a reformatting, or just an adjustment, whatever the case may be, no big deal. I will say this though, copy and paste what you currently have, so you don't lose it if you have anything, and put it into a note or some way, shape, or form. Or if you want, you can also go, let me show you real quick, you can export out, you can export out your profile as it stands today into a PDF, if you didn't know that already. You can hop right over to more in your profile and then save your profile as a PDF. And you'll be able to have everything before you make any changes um, into a PDF format, into a PDF format. So, okay, so you got that there going for you too. So you have all the bells and whistles you need to be able to. Let me show you what that PDF looks like real quick. There you go. Okay. So every Wednesday, we do live LinkedIn Q&As. I really encourage you to email me or email me any comments you have about today at brian at brianhortat.com. We'd love to get those questions answered for you. And then next week, we'll be live again at noon p.m. Um, or excuse me, at noon Eastern Standard Time and 9 a.m. Pacific. And we'll be live always on facebook.com slash the Brian Horvath, which is my um, Facebook page for brianhorvath.com. And uh, if not, there'll be other places too, like YouTube. You can check out the channel, uh, my YouTube channel afterwards. And if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, that'd be great. I'm trying to actually get to 200 subscribers by the end of this month. I'm at like 175. You can go to youtube.com slash C slash Brian Horvath on purpose. And uh, make sure you get all the updates when these new videos get put out, like this one. I'll be putting this one out um, with a little bit of editing and uh, cutting out some of the some of the stuff to drop it into YouTube for your viewing pleasure and learning pleasure. But I'm so glad that you're here. And by the way, I want to help you know, live and love your purpose. Too many times people get tangled up in knots, wondering and wandering, lost without a purpose. And I really want to see that stop. I want to help you know, live and love not only the purpose for your career and your finances, yes, but for your life. And I talk about uh, my journey as well as some practical ways that I, in spiritual ways and emotional ways that I got out of a dark pit where I actually tried to take my own life many years ago and was able to come out of that to be successful today, to be married, to have a couple kids and to be doing things like this I never thought I'd be doing. There's a dream inside of you. There's a purpose inside of you. What's holding you back? Is there something that's blocking you? We all have the resistance. We all get afraid. I want to help you power through that fear and overcome it. Download my book. It's a new audio book that I recorded um, from my ebook, and it's called Your Purpose, How to Know It, Live It, Love It. You can get it at brianhorvath.com slash audiobook. I encourage you to check that out today. It's a, probably about a 65-minute listen, 
and uh, or if you want to speed it up like I do a lot of times, it could be done in 20 minutes maybe. Um, you can hear me sing like the chipmunks. So glad you're here. Glad you're checking um, these videos out. I really hope they add value to you. And uh, I really look forward to uh, seeing you soon. Oh, which by the way, reminds me, coming soon, January 2022, the Ultimate LinkedIn Profile course is coming. And I can't wait to get it um, out. But uh, you'll be hearing more about that a little bit in the future. Until then, again, email me at Brian Hor Brian at brianhorvath.com with your LinkedIn live Q&A questions. I'd love to be able to help you make the right connections on LinkedIn. We'll see you soon.